Hello, welcome to IT Show TV at IC 2020 in Amsterdam. Many thanks for joining us for the latest panel discussion. This one is on growing your business globally. I'm joined today by uh, three very kind guests. Uh, next to me is Matthew Dayton from Vega. In the middle is Peter Hunt from Hueshot. At the end, Elliot Moores from uh, Vis-a-Vis. Welcome, gents. Um, so we had a, a guest column a few months ago from a, 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 an integrator, and it was entitled Go Big, Go Niche, or Go Home. Um, so I figured, uh, go big or go home, Matthew. Where, how do we feel on that? Uh, I think, it, you know, in the, the landscape where we operate in Asia, um, having um, footprint across you know multiple jurisdictions really brings a lot of benefit to us because obviously you can you know spread your risk so to speak um, and economies that are that are doing well can help prop up the ones that aren't doing as well um, so definitely from our perspective um, going big and having that that presence really helps yeah and Peter you're in Australia Dan's in the UK yeah we, we got a similar similar sort of footprint to uh, to Matthew really and and you do get to the point where, as a consultancy business, where you have global clients, you really have to have a global presence. So, you know, our challenge is, is taking that next step. And, uh, you know, we're getting to a point where, um, although we do operate globally, we need a physical presence in some countries where we don't have one at the moment. So that, that's our next challenge is to move into that area. Really, you're one of the part of the sort of most established, well-known kind of integrators in the UK. How does, what's the, the view on kind of expanding globally? I think it depends which model you take. I think there are competitors of ours and, and general AV integrators that either go down the PSNI, GPA route yeah. and, and do go down that partner path. All these integrators like AVISPL, those sort of guys that are actually wanting to put feet on the ground and offices in location, diversified, those sort of guys. And, and neither model is perfect in either way. It's actually, you know, certainly for us, we've seen benefit in going down the partner path. But partner selection is key because they're an extension of your own business and trust is, is the most important part. And that's the difficult bit because it's nothing to do with how great these partners are, it's personal. These are relationships you've got to build over time. So it's, it's not easy by any feat. Okay, so it's as much about them fulfilling a criteria but also about a personal relationship for you. Like, yeah, do they think the same as you? I guess. I don't, I don't yeah, the, the culture of both businesses and the values have got to be consistent because we're asking them to represent us in another marketplace and in another territory. So the selection process is not simple because it's very easy to win a customer. It takes a long, 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 long time to win them back. Should you lose them? Yeah. So actually, that's what's probably halted our growth. Is we've been very conscious of got great customers but we don't want to put our relationship with them at risk by expanding with the wrong partners or, or doing work just for the sake of passing a purchase order over the fence that just it just doesn't suit us so it is it is so much about personal relationships otherwise you can get it wrong real quick right and actually that was a driving force for us because you know the tapestry of Asia is, is, is fairly complicated and, and can be quite complex having our own feet on the street so to speak in all of these locations was really um, a strategic um, decision uh, to do that in order to maintain and hold on to the clients. You know, yeah. if you look at our client bank, it's all global Fortune 500 clients that have operations in all of the different, you know, challenging locations of Asia, and it's our staff that are interacting with them on a re sure. regular basis. So you're in those locations to service those clients. Right. Yeah. yeah, yeah. If you look at the way where our growth has been, if you look at where the banking sectors are strongest in Asia, that's pretty much where where yeah, our strongest yeah. offices are. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I mean, in terms of expansion plans, you know, without revealing too much, I mean, uh, when you have that discussion, is it kind of financial reasons or logistics or maybe concerns about growing too fast? What are the sort of concerns for you? And Peter, question to you after the for, for us, it was always following our clients. So okay. having the conversations with our clients and saying, and they're leading us into certain markets and therefore us making a commitment financially to, to establish ourselves and, you know, build the office in that location. So again, like I say, if you look at where we've grown, it's been following those clients sure. into those markets. And of course, there is a, there is a, a cost of doing that. Like you've got to put um, energy and, yeah. and um, resources into it. But once you get established and you start to build those relationships, you build the trust with the client, um, you know, the ongoing revenue that you can generate from that, that structure becomes very uh, compelling. But I guess you're protected in a way because you know there's business there already right. because they're it's saying, the we want you to help us in India or somewhere yeah. and you, right. yeah. Okay. Right. Peter, how have you found the, the growing process? The consultancy market is very different, I think, yeah, to the integrated right. market because um, you know, it's, it's slim pickings in the consultancy market, particularly in the Asia Pac region. So, you know, you'd have thought that it would be easy for us to expand in that area and, and do all that, that, that stuff that Matthew was talking about. But actually, it's, it's, it's harder 
um, for, for a multitude of reasons it's harder. The, the key thing that I think um, we were just talking about earlier, which is the relationship side of it, is, is the thing that's the most important to me. Yeah. Because anybody who starts a Hugh business anywhere else in the world is immediately representing 20 years worth of, of work yeah. and also representing the managing directors of other Hugh businesses that are existing yeah. and doing a good job. And it only takes one thing to go wrong for the house of cards to look at collapsing. And my job is to make sure that that doesn't happen. So when are we looking at uh, going into another region, we do that on a collaborative basis, on a collegiate basis. It's not just my decision that we do it. Yeah. I get the others around the table and go, this is what we want to do and this is the person we want to do it with. And we spend a lot of time making sure that we get that right. And for that reason, there have been some opportunities that we haven't taken up okay. because we haven't found the right person. And it's the right person that is going to make it or break it. Uh, okay. Exactly. If you look at the, where we've had you know, road bumps along the way of establishing our offices, it's generally around individual people that we've uh, been working with that haven't worked out. Yeah. Uh, so that's a big, that is a big challenge. It is, yeah. I mean, I guess the temptation doing well in one region is to say, well, we've got good people, yeah. we've got good skill set, let, let's show other parts, let's, you know, there's money to be made here. Yeah. Do you have to kind of ring yourself in almost? Going back to, you know, the original uh, question about, you know, go big or, yeah. or go niche. I mean, we have taken the, the go big route and we, focus on the multinational clients. Yeah. So we're not, you know, most of our um, offices across Asia are not looking at the small SME yeah. niche market. We are looking at the big corporate market. Sure. And because we're looking at the corporate market, we're not, um, you know, structured in a way that would support that SME market particularly well. And so yeah. therefore there are other integrators in those markets that are serving that market much more efficiently than what we would. So, you know, there is an opportunity to be to be that niche piece as well. It's just the path that we, we didn't choose that path to go down. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Peter, do you, is, there, there, is there some excitement there? You know, sometimes you, when you see an opportunity and you, you kind of have to be a bit more cautious or... It's, it's, or... it's, a, it's a funny old game because it's, it's a big market, but at the same time, it's a very small market. Yeah. Um, we, we find that uh, the majority of our expansion has been taken through clients taking us into a region or asking us to step up and, and go into an area. Someone like India, for example, is a classic case. India is a huge country from a population point of view. Geographically, it's quite large as well. But when you set up in, in Mumbai, and then you're asked to go and set up in Bangalore, you know, you might as well go and be asked to set up in the Middle East. Or, or it's, 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 it's the amount of effort and, and trust and everything else of finding the right people is, is, is big, even if it's around the corner or halfway around the world. So um, like these two guys, I think taking our business forward has been through clients asking for us to do that. Sure. And we're facing those challenges today where clients are saying, can you go and work in this country? Can you go work in that country? And we go, how do we service that? Is it just a bit too far from one of our current centers to do that? Sure. Do we go and establish a relationship? Do we do something? We're working in Japan at the moment through a carefully selected partner, which is working extremely well. And so that's something I want to build on even more. So now. are you splitting yourself geographically or is it just kind of on a project to project basis? How do you... Um, I think it's without, you know, Matthew will, will probably back this up. Asia has been a real growth area for the last 10 or 15 years, in all honesty. It just seems to have gathered pace more and more and more. Well, let's hope that carries on, of course, but even if it yeah. levels out and maintains the current level, there's still a lot of work out there. Yeah. Um, we, we're okay in Europe, we're okay in, in Asia Pac, you know, all the way through Australia and up to India. Um, I think the holes in our area are in the Middle East and in the, Mer in the, in the sure. Americas, and that's where we've got to focus on next. So that, that's our, our focus for the next period. Elliot, Peter was saying it's, it's very much people that's driving this. Is that, you talked about relationships earlier on and stuff, is that the case for you rather than kind of financial aspirations, shall we say, or brand aspirations? It's, it's the finding the people that's going to essentially yeah. drive this. Yeah, and I mean, <clears throat> you know, this, what we've said already is we're no different to anybody else. It's our clients that are driving that growth based on the successes that we've had within Europe. That's, that's reality. But actually, I think what's really important and what's driven those conversations is our ability to be transparent with our clients and say, actually, these are the risks that we pose by extending and by growing and by going overseas and, and, and involving them in those conversations because they know that we haven't got a physical presence in certain territories, yeah. but they're asking us to engage in that area anyway because it's that partnership and that actually we're, we're going on this together and we're going to support you and we're going to need you to support us. So that's where it is personal. So transparency with client and with partner is, is critical because everybody's taking the risk, right? When you start to grow yeah. and go outside yeah. of your natural comfort zone where you've been operating for and, so long. And those are exactly the conversations we're having with you know, the, the global 500s when they're saying, can you go and work in this territory? Yeah. You know, they're, 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 sometimes their approach is, well, why wouldn't you? 
And our approach is, well, you know, we're a relatively small company compared to yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. We don't have the deep pockets so we can just go and buy an office yeah, and establish yeah, yeah. one. So we therefore have to go in carefully and methodically and reasonably and make sure that you know we don't put the rest of the business at risk sure. by going in there and establishing an office in that particular territory. Yeah, yeah. So, and, and ironically, they actually respect that, I think. Yeah. They, they do actually understand that. Yeah. They, they, they think probably more of us because we're being honest about that yeah. and saying it rather than just saying, yep, here's a, here's a load success, of cash and Success isn't guaranteed overnight. No, Even if you go not. brick and mortar in any territory in the world, the reality <laughs> is you're starting from scratch. Our argument has always been if we were to go and open five offices in Asia tomorrow, we're never going to have the, the breadth and the experience of some of the, you know, the larger integrators yeah. in that territory. So on that basis, can we offer our clients the greatest advice and consultancy about how to deliver projects, how, you know, how to engage in, in those territories? So that's why the partner method works, because you're reliant on the partner's knowledge and experience in that to advise the customer. So transparency and relationship between partner, customer and, and whoever holds that contract is the most important thing without yeah, a shadow of a doubt. It's the hardest to achieve. It's, yeah, because it <laughs> takes so, because yeah. you know, relationships take years and years to build yeah. and, and trust is gained through going through tough times and you know, no matter, through, once you look through the smoke and mirrors of everybody who says that projects go seamlessly from front to back, <laughs> right? And, and nobody who's really in this industry knows that that happens all the time. And it's those relationships, having the ability to be open and honest with partners to go, guys, what are we going to do about this? We need to sort this out, you know? And, and that's, that's the pinnacle of, of where you want to try and be in that partner model. Yeah. With regards to kind of global expansion, it seems to be, I'm sure there's a few models, but there's two that sort of stand out. It's one that you, you, you get local faces in that region that know the area, or you ship in your staff from another area because you can trust them and they know your working practice. How, yeah, how we, have you found that? We, we very much focus on local, local knowledge, okay. local staff. So if you look at the spectrum of our offices, everyone is staffed and, and head, headed by local guys okay. uh, pretty much across the board. There's only one exception to that So, so it's easier so, to learn your the Vega way of working than have that local knowledge? Essentially, you're, you're kind of yeah, so playing we, one over the other. I yeah, we, we will, um, you know, recruit guys, you know, yeah. local guys in, in the Philippines, run by, yeah. you know, the head guys, Filipino in Malaysia, it's a Malaysian, etc., yeah. etc. And we obviously bring them into the fold and, and yeah. uh, train them up in the style that, that Vega sure. uh, works under, and we are obviously a leading clients towards them sure. uh, all the time. So, and we, you know, as much as possible, try and get the dialogue between all the officers uh, going, so that there's a lot of. You I know, mean, is that an issue of speed in terms of you can, they can you can get them up and running in the vague way of working quicker than you, they could learn the, the local industry? Sure. Yeah. 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 It is. I mean, and, and of course, because we've got the experience and we've, you know, we've, we've got robust officers, you know, at Hong yeah. Kong and India, etc. We can we can actually send guys in temporarily to help get yeah. things moving. Peter, you get, are you? you know, uh, recruiting people with a huge shop mindset? Or are you getting uh, people who know the local market inside what out? Is a, yeah. What is a huge shop mindset? Because yeah. they've been there for... I'm still looking for it. Yeah. <laughs> but you're, or you're hiring them because they've been there no, five or 10 years. No, the, the key thing, um, and I agree with Matthew, that the, in Asia particularly, the key thing to do is, is get the, um, the geographical country married with the culture. And there are ways of doing business in India, which are very different to how you do it in Singapore, which are different how you do it in Hong Kong. Yeah. As long as the integrity of what we do is not compromised, the method of getting there is, is okay because yeah. it's, it's a cultural thing. Yeah. And, and that's really, really important, particularly in places like India. Even, even between territories in India, yeah. there's cultural differences. It's interesting so, you said even within the same country, it can, be, yeah. it can feel like different. Absolutely. Yeah. Particularly India and China. Yeah. Yeah. Those two yeah. countries that have those, you know, those geographical... Yeah. 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 But even between the states, the states is a completely different game altogether. The deliver, I, I, think it, I always think it comes from a project perspective down to delivery. The de who is to say that the Western world's approach to delivery is what's right for every country? Yeah. It's not. And you have to take the time to educate yourself in the culture because, you know, clients overseas have been operating well before we got involved. You know, and that's, yeah. that's the reality. So they must be doing something right. So actually, don't be naive enough to just go, well, we do it this way in the UK or yes. and actually right. this is how you've got to do this it. Because, is the, right way, because yeah. the reality is you're going to get frustrated. The project's not going to run very well because you're not working with the culture that's established itself. You've got to take the time to learn and educate and yourself. That, and that's, that's a really fine line between having cultural awareness on project work and having integrity of delivery. 
you, yeah. it's, you've got to find, and it's, 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 it's honestly, it's, you, know, you know the phrase when you're entering the earth, you're, you're going in the sort of the thinness of a slice of a thickness of a piece of paper. You've got to hit that point every single yeah. time. If you don't, you bounce off or you burn up. So um, it's very, it's, you, you, and I, I wasn't really aware of the US model, although I can sort of believe that. Even in yeah. the Western culture, you know, English speaking, even between Australia and, and the UK, the methodology of doing projects is very yeah. different. Yeah. Very, very different. So, um, you know, you can't, and we see this a lot um, in the consulting world, particularly where we have uh, consultants that have flown in from other territories in to deliver a project. Yeah and they just get it completely wrong. Yeah. And it's not because they're doing anything wrong, it's because they don't understand the culture, sure. don't understand the methodology. And how, yeah. So there's a, it sounds like there's a lot of patience involved. A lot of patience terms. involved, yeah. Yeah, yeah. 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 And, and also you know, guidance and, and just keeping people on, on the path, right? Yeah. Just make sure that you're constantly in contact and, and, and working and can, with the team. And you and can't and learn this. This comes from pure experience. Yeah, it yeah. just comes from doing it for 20 years and, and understanding it. Yeah. I mean, that's how our, you know, our, office, our offices have grown over 35 years. Yeah. Of, Consistently, you know, working with clients, working with teams in various locations, and and build it slowly, slowly but surely, yeah. to where we are now. Fantastic. Um, many thanks for your time, gents. A really interesting session. Um, many thanks for joining us for this video. And there's plenty more uh, panel discussions from IC 2020 to enjoy on our video channels. Uh, thanks for joining us for this particular one. Bye bye.